Hey guys, how are we doing? It's Martin Cliff here, uh, and in this video we're taking a look at my alternate pedal board, uh, or alternative pedal board, or backup pedal board, however you want to think about it. Uh, and I'm just going to give it, give it a quick playthrough. Um, just to explain what goes on the way it's laid out, it starts off with a full tone uh, 69 Mark II fuzz, uh, and then the 70, a full tone 70 BC 108C fuzz, and then it goes up to an exotic EP booster. Um, I'll explain why it's laid out the way it is in a minute. And then it's a Keeley modded Boss DS1 distortion pedal, a Keeley modded Boss SD1 Super Overdrive, a full tone OCD Overdrive. Then it comes back to this Smart Gate from MXR. And then we have a Spark booster from TC Electronic. A Carbon copy analog delay from XR, and finally a TCL electronic ditto looper pedal. Um, and it's laid out like this um, because I like my guitar to go in at the bottom left of a pedal board. Um, it's not quite on shot, but the guitar comes in here, and the fuzz has to be first in the chain anyway, particularly the 69 fuzz because it's very sensitive to other pedals going on. Um, and obviously I want the signal to come out of the ditto looper at the end so any effects I put in can um, can be looped. Um, but the reason that the back row is, is laid out how it is is because if I'm running uh, an amp with an effects loop and I want to connect through the effects loop basically the OCD here is the last of the chain that would go before the amp so there's a cable that comes around from here to here that I can disconnect, connect that to the input of the amplifier, the send from the amplifier to the input of the smart gate because that will clean up any noise from the pedals on the amplifier and then the effect send can go back from the detail looper. So it gives me the flexibility to do either option uh, which is a really useful um, ability to do. So let's just have a quick run through the, the pedals. I've got a few on at the moment so I'll let me turn some off. Okay, so that is that's my sort of go to stock clean tone. Um, and then the pedals that are always on are the MXR Smart Gate um, because it cleans up any noise from it, any any overdrive or distortion pedals. So let's turn that on. So that shouldn't have any effect at the moment. It'll cut it off nice and quiet, but you're not getting any noise we're speaking of anyway. Uh, if I was to turn it off and turn the fuzz on, you would hear quite a bit of noise going on, probably particularly if I go in single coil mode, let's switch the coil tap in on the guitar and the smart gate just clamps down and gets rid of most of that noise. So that's always on and then the other pedal I leave on all the time um, pretty much is the EP booster because of its magic value. I think I've talked about that in other videos but <laughs> It just provides some kind of strange, sort of slightly fattened tone um, uh, with a little bit of sparkle. It's just a really, really cool pedal. So whatever else happens with, with the pedals, the P Booster and the Smart Gate are going to be on. Um, everything else, not everything else is true bypass. The two Keeley modded Boss pedals aren't true bypass, but one of the mods that Robert Keeley does is he makes them as as close to true bypass as possible so the um, you don't get that nasty boss kind of dodgy buffer tone going on um, so then the, the order of the pedals I have I obviously go fuzz and fuzz in the front end and the two fuzzes are quite different so the 69 fuzz uh, is a kind of more traditional style of, um, of fuzz pedal <laughs> not quite as fizzy um, it's it's got more kind of singing sustain to it mm -hmm. 
cleans up really well uh, when I just roll back the volume slightly. Sounds great with single coils as well. Now, 70 fuzz is a much more aggressive sounding fuzz. So I have that tempered a little bit by having the, um, the fuzz control not quite all the way up. Um, and it gives me just a kind of more punchy tone because fuzz can often get lost in the mix. Um, the next pedal then in the chain is my trusty Keeley DS1, which I've had for I don't know how many years now, um, but it's a really good sounding distortion pedal. I'm running it with fairly low gain. <laughs> So I'm using almost like an overdrive pedal, but it's got that slightly metallic harshness that you don't get out of a decent overdrive pedal. Um, it's lovely for, for lead playing, um, but it's not too much for um, for playing uh, rhythm parts as well, which is, is good. Um, and I can always um, add in a boost to, to pull it above. In fact, I'll show you that now. If I add in Spark Booster, Spark Booster is set to give a mid-range hump which really helps the guitar punch through for solos. Uh, next pedal then is the Keeley SD1. And I've got this set with the drive pretty much all the way off. Um, and the tone quite a way down, so it's quite dark sounding overdrive pedal, low, plenty of level. Um, uh, and this is kind of, it's there to, to push the amp a bit, it also works well with, with the other pedals. And it's great for just kind of low gain, um, kind of crunchy chords and stuff. But then if I layer that with the, the DS1, Then it's got a really fat tone to it, very different from just using the Spark Booster along with the DS1, um, but still, yeah, another really useful tone. Next in the chain we have the OCD, which is much harder edged overdrive. <laughs>
great for kind of rock and roll, crunchy kind of rhythm tones. Um, and again, I can layer that with... If I layer that with a spark booster, it gives a really nice tone. heavy kind of punchy tone for that. Um, sticking the DS1 in front of it. gain as you would ever want a really again another cool powerful tone and the SD1 doesn't make a lot of difference but it's just subtle So it's all about creating different layers of, of overdrive. As I said, this is my alternative board. This isn't what I use as my first choice pedals. So it's to give me different options in, particularly when we're tracking rhythm guitar parts. Um, when I want something, maybe I use my, my default sound on you know, from my ordinary pedal board on one side and I want something on the other side or with a different guitar or whatever. Or if I'm jamming with someone else, um, I don't want them to sound like me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just options. It's, it's mostly about rhythm guitar, this board. The final actual pedal that affects the sound on the chain is my trusty carbon copy analog delay, which I have set for a reasonably short <laughs> delay with a bit of modulation, two or three repeats. like about this is that when I'm playing rhythm it, it doesn't get in the way it's set fairly subtle the mix control and the regen control are fairly low um, it just gives a bit of kind of ambiance and just a kind of cool sound and it kind of almost seems to come in um, when you stop playing almost like a dynamic delay but obviously it's analog, it's warm, it's modulated, so it sounds so much cooler than that. And it doesn't interfere with lead playing either, it just gives you that space that, that you want with lead playing, so... Now in terms of why I've laid out the board uh, how I have, other than in fact the actual wiring of it, um, obviously it is a Pedal Train Junior which is um, two steps up from Pedal Train Nano that my main boards are made of, I have two of them. Um, there'll be another video explaining exactly how I use them. But this is, this is a bigger board, um, it's two layers and it is slightly sloped um, but it's not sufficiently sloped that um, certainly playing sat down uh, you can reach pedals of the same height on the back row without either getting pedal boosters which are little ledges you can attach to your pedal train or um, yeah, or catching the, the knobs with your foot 
uh, of the pedal row below. So it's not a problem for the boss pedals because they're much taller anyway. So they're on the back row as a result of that. So I can get them much more easily with my foot without snagging these knobs and what have you. Um, then the other back pedals, the Smart Gator and EP Booster, as I've said, is always on. But the EP Booster is a bit taller anyway. Uh, and then the OCD is, if I'm going to use the OCD, it's going to be a more of a core sound for a song anyway. And because it's only got the Ditto Looper in front of it, which I'll talk about in a second, there's a bit more space, so I can get to that reasonably easily uh, without catching the pedal in front. Um, so that's that's kind of my, my theory, my philosophy on, on why I've got this. I've got the smaller, lower profile pedals at the front and then the taller pedals at the back. And as I say, last in the chain then is a TC Ditto, Ditto Looper, which is a great practice tool. Um, you know, it just repeats what you put in, really simple to use. One knob just for volume and one button which um, you press to record, you press again to stop recording and play. Uh, you double tap it to stop the loop uh, and then press again to play it. You can overdub, um, there are lots of useful features, hold your foot on it. It takes a while to get used to all the combinations of, of foot presses, um, but just for recording simple rhythm parts to jam over, it's a great tool. So at the moment I have the loop in there that I used at the start of the video. So if I hit play... jam over it. stop it stops it playing um cool little pedal just really useful for and if i wanted to create something something different uh, i just need to hold it in until you hear it audibly click which means that it's gone back into true bifast mode and then if i come up with some kind of riff that i think would work well so i don't know Save and I can then um, you know, jam other parts over it. And it's not useful just for lead playing. If I want to come up with alternate rhythm parts, um, then I can use it for that as well. So let's say I use it for a kind of harmony rhythm part. So I'll crank the level up so I can hear it a bit more clearly. So that's how you use that. So obviously I've got a good collection of you know, high quality pedals here that will let me do a huge range of different things. Um, really great fun. All fits in a compact bag. 
It's powered by a Voodoo Lab Pedal Power 2 Plus, which has eight independent outputs. So it does mean that I'm having to run three pedals on one outlet, um, which are the two boss pedals and the OCD. Um, they all exist before the amplifier, even if I was using it in split mode. And they were the combination of three that A, used the lowest current and B, generated the least noise when I daisy chained them. So um, that was that was fine. Generally, you're safe with overdrive and distortion and boost pedals that are all before the amp. Um, and obviously the, the 69 fuzz being an old style fuzz has a positive ground so I had to, had to use a reverse polarity cable um, to go to that one which fortunately I had one of um, so there we go uh, it's all wired up with um, evidence audio monorail cable using the um, screw in solderless plugs with the exception of the cable that goes across the back from the OCD to the smart gate which is a Megami cable with some nitric plugs on um, and that's just tucked underneath all wired up neatly all fits in a convenient bag that you get free with a pedal board what more can we said just a really useful e easy way of working um, I've never had a pedal board that's been as compact and versatile as this in the same time um, and it's great for recording which is what I put it together for really Okay, I hope that's been interesting. Uh, until next time, take care, guys, and I'll see you soon.